Good morning, folks. Hopefully you caught our special video last night. Most of you are unaware of the malice tossed this way on a daily basis, and sometimes you just have to strike back. We did. We've got incredible news stories to hit today, and we're starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, and we're seeing the continued turning through of the coronal hole in the bright active regions on its south. Those areas have lost their sunspot production and decayed, and the solar wind from the coronal hole is arriving this morning. Top left, we did notice the birth of a new active region, it's crackling hard and potentially developing sunspots beneath it. Solar wind here. Top left, the jolts you see to plasma speed and density the last few hours are the beginning of days of enhanced stream impacts. Should get more intense than this for sure over the weekend. Let's start the science articles with two blazing Earth-like planets. The first one they say is so close to its red dwarf star that it forces an incredible heat effect. And while Earth-sized and rocky, you wouldn't want to live there one of those planets that looks like hell. They do say it's retained its original atmosphere up to now, so the host star must not be a huge flare maker. But there's another planet they found without its atmosphere, but it's also rocky, and they say volcanoes light up the night sky from nearby, making the planet look something like this. Folks, we've dealt with earthquake prediction factors a good bit the last few days. Here, Another example of a group constraining it to only one factor, finding the geomagnetic storm forcing, shows the signal but only at 64%. This is because you can't just look at one factor. There are a number of critical factors you have to use, including the IMF and, in their case, the strength and source of the geomagnetic storm. More relevant to most humans is this, the continued confirmation of space weather health risks, those who have our textbook will remember some of these authors, and here it's the increased heart attack risk during solar flares that occur while geomagnetic storms are underway, with an amplified risk of all cardiac issues in the days immediately following CME impact. That's chapter 6 in our book. Folks, I found this thesis out of Indonesia. The student is working with the main geomagnetic team there and top professors in the region, and they are describing the importance and progress of field monitoring in Indonesia. Of course, if you are a veteran observer, you have a thought or two about their location observation P west of the spherical cap pole. It's the exact spot where the north and south magnetic pole shifts are set to meet, the Bay of Bengal. Last but not least, it's long been known that polar mesospheric summer echoes are modulated by solar storms, and so their change relative to past reactions is indicative of a change on Earth. It's a complex bit of atmospheric physics and math, but I think I can simplify it like this. They accurately identify the critical role of charged particles attaching to ice and dust in these polar mesospheric summer echoes. That's why space weather matters. And the main conclusion of the paper is that those echoes are increasing. Then, they turn right around and randomly guess that the increase is due to cold air. Well, that might help with the ice part, but it's kind of cold in the mesosphere already. And in reality, we are seeing more charged particles enter the atmosphere because our field is failing. The ongoing magnetic excursion is on its way to minimum power, and everything from cosmic rays to solar wind particles and even the highest energy proton surges from the sun all have a path either less arduous under the current secular variation of the field or are directly funneled to that polar region anyway. I submit, a better hypothesis explaining the increase in those echoes is the increased charge particles due to Earth's weakening magnetic field and which are already well-known modulators of those echoes. See, that wasn't so bad, was it? We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.